Hey everyone, this is Eric, and today we're going to look at actions in Ember. We're going to look at a few examples on how to, to work with actions, and we're going to go a little bit beyond the basics. This is inspired by a post I saw at Ember Map. So let's take a look. So here is Ember Twiddle. If you don't know, that's a website to help you create Ember projects or just little Ember apps to play around with it and, and see how things work. So you can see here, this is the handlebars file, the application file just says, welcome to Ember Twiddle. So we're gonna go ahead and create a button and let's create an on-click event. And inside that on-click event, we're gonna cre create something called show pop-up. And we're gonna have something called click me and we're gonna close it. And of course right now it doesn't do anything, but we could see we have on click and it's pointing towards show pop-up. And we know that since this is the application template that it's gonna be looking for an action in the controller. So some people would say, well, why even use, because the typical way we do actions in numbers is use this action hash. So you can have something like this and you have actions like this. But let's just create, before we do that, let's just create a function called show pop-up without the action hash at all. And inside there, we're gonna have some alert that says, hello world. And so if we click on it, you can see here's our hello world pop-up box. And so why do we even need the action hash there? Well, let's do a little bit more here. So instead of just having it show a pop-up, let's have another property in our, in our controller here and we'll call it uh, show message and we'll set it to false. And then back in our application template, we're just gonna do a quick if, if show message. And we're gonna have close the if and we're just gonna show a message. This is the message. And now we want to show this message if someone clicks the click me button. So usually in Ember, we would have this dot toggle property, and then we can put the name of the, prop, the, the property message. Now if we click the click me button, we get our hello world pop-up, but we get an uncaught type error at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that right at the bottom in the, in the console. So obviously it didn't work. So it doesn't know what this is. So that would be a problem. So let's go ahead and see how we can fix that. So we can go in, we can go to our init function or init method. And you could see here, I brought it up. If you look at the methods for Ember controller class, init right here, it says that it's an overridable method called when object is instantiated. By default, does nothing unless it's overridden, overridden during class definition. And it also says, please note, make sure you run this at super arguments, otherwise things just will break. So, so you can use the init in kind of the life cycle of the controller to understand, to do things when the object is instantiated. So we can go into init here make sure we have that. And then we could do something like this. We can go this.showPopUp equals this.showPopUp.bind and then bind it to this. So hypothetically now, you're, we're gonna have actually the correct this of this Ember object, the controller, which will have access to the toggle property, which we should be able to use show message now. So we could click me, yep. So now you can see here, we see the message. So, but obviously this is pretty cumbersome to do for every single um, every single action and it can become confusing. So let's say instead of doing it this way with this.show popup that we do it another way. So one thing we can do, we can go back to the application and we can see here, we just have this on click show pop-up. So we can actually make this an action. And if we make it an action, it will automatically bind this to it. So we won't even need this. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out. 
Let's see if it still works. Yep, it still works. So we don't even need to uh, create an actions hash still. We can use action, show pop-up. It's going to bind this to show pop-up, and we're going to have all the ember goodness in here. So the next question is, well, then why doesn't everybody do that instead of creating this action hash? Well, the action hash gives you a little bit more flexibility in namespaces. Obviously, we called this method show pop-up, but we couldn't call it init because init is already being used by Ember. We can't call it destroy. And so, few, uh, so that obviously is an issue. And also, actions make it just more understandable of where everything is. So if we know we're in an action hash, we know where things are. So let's, let's do that. Let's go ahead and we'll put this show pop-up in the action hash. So here's show pop-up and we have, we have it in there. But you, now you can see in the Ember Twindle, there's nothing to show and you're probably wondering, well, what happened? And let me delete this to make this easier. So if you go back to the application handlebars file, you can see here, well, here's the action. Why isn't it showing it? Well, you actually have to put it in single quotes, double quotes and now it, it'll show up. So there's no errors in our console and now it works as expected. Now the next thing you're probably thinking of is, well, click me here. What happens if this button was in a form? So let's put this in a form. Let's, let's hit the click me button. Hey, it disappeared. So it actually submitted the form. So that's not something we want. So we could go in here to the show pop-up and do event that prevent default. And then when we click on it, it works. But of course there's an easier way to do it. We don't actually, that would also be cumbersome to put this prevent default every time we have something in a form. Um, so let's delete that. And instead of doing an on click, we actually don't even need to put the on click here because by convention by default, it'll do it on the click action of the button. And now since we deleted the on click here, it'll work as we expect and it's gonna prevent default by default. So we don't have to do anything. So that's a couple of quick things. I went through that pretty quick, so you may wanna watch that again if you are confused. But that's just a couple of things of why we have this action hash. We can actually call the show pop-up init if we wanted to. It's not gonna conflict with the namespace of the Ember controller. I don't know, let's try that. Let's call it init. And we'll go back here. Instead of doing show pop-up, we'll call it init. Yep, and still works fine. It's not conflicting with the namespace. So we'll go ahead and put that back to what it was. And we'll change this back. Oops, show pop up. We'll go back to our controller. Yeah, show pop up. Let me see here. Controller action doesn't look right. There we go. That was weird. And this is change this back to show pop up. Show pop up. Okay, so we're back to where we were before. So now a part of this is controllers. If we create a component, there's something called uh, closure action. So let's take a look at what we can do here. So let's create, instead of having the show message, let's create a counter. And we can actually pass values into our action. So we're gonna do val here. Instead of toggling a property, we're gonna do this.set. And we're going to put in counter here. And then we're gonna set it to the mount. So this is gonna be renewed this.get counter plus whatever the val is that gets sent to it. And then we're gonna go back to our application and we can leave can leave this in here, but let's go ahead and add in our counter. You can see it just shows zero right here, but that's fine. 
So we want our button to actually pass in an amount. So we can just do something like this. And you can see as you click it, it's adding it. But we can even, if we want to, we can create kind of a closure action here. So we can do something like this. So we can have an action, and then we can have an action here. And it's kind of what it's actions going to return this action and then it's going to be it's going to send the other action to it so you can see here we can add click here and it's just going to be adding the one each time but this doesn't really do anything so let's take a look at it how it relates to a component so I'm going to put this button back to the way it was and you can see it works so let's create a new component I'm going to do add component we're going to call it my component and then inside the my component, I'm just going to call it h1 here, my component. And let's just make sure it shows up. We're going to take a look at our application. And right here, we're going to have my component. Yep, here's my component at the bottom. But let's add this button into the component. And I still want to do the same thing with this increment. So let's, we're going to delete this button here. We're going to go to our component and we're going to add it. Oops. Well, we lost our component. So we're going to have to recreate it here. My copy paste skills aren't good. All right, so I'm going to create a button. We're going to have an action. We're going to do a pop up. And we're going to have something called click me. So you see there, this doesn't work. When I hit, click the click me, it's looking for a pop-up action inside the component and not inside the controller. So we could do it a couple of ways. So I'll show you one way. So we can go back into our component here. And we can create an actions hash. And we can create a pop-up. And let's just make sure this works. Test. OK, you can see here it's working, but it's only talking to the component here, the action inside the component. So let's pass in the component, or the action from the controller. So we look back at our application file we can actually do something like this we could do mine pop-up equals pop-up and then inside the component we could do this dot get my pop-up and then we can pass in a value here if we wanted to. At least we can pass in one. And you click me. Oops. OK, we're going to add the show pop up. There it is. We're passing the show pop up. Now you can see it's incrementing here. So if we look back at our component, we're just passing in a one. And we're doing this dot get my pop up. But, and we could do it another way. We can do a val here and then pass in the val to it. And this is triggering the, the action, the closer action that we set up here. This closer action is being set. And then inside our component handlebars file, we could pass in a value here. This will work the same way. But what happens if we we don't even want to make any changes. It seems like if you look at our component here, it doesn't do much. It's just triggering the the action that's in the controller and it's not doing anything else. So we can actually delete this altogether. And then you could see here, if we click it, we get an error. But if we could take a look back at our component handlebars file, it's since we have it in quotes, it's looking for the pop-up action inside the the actual component, but if we take this away,
and we get rid of this and we use something called my pop-up there we go you can see we're not sending anything to it so we can actually send a number alright so you can see here now what we're doing is this my pop-up is being is this my pop-up if you take a look at the application is the name that we're sending it's called my pop-up and this is the show pop-up action in this controller so it's a little confusing but you can see here now we're using this action we're passing one and it's going directly to the application controller and we don't even need to define any additional actions inside the component so that is a really quick example of how to do some action fun some closure actions if you have any questions leave a comment below thanks